Hello once again students and welcome to another video. Uh, this one, an extremely interesting topic called Shays Rebellion. Now I've seen many historical lists, people, us dorky historians like Mrs. Vijay and myself, we like to talk about things that happened in history, we like to rank them in different orders and things like that. And I've seen an, a numerous number of websites and different forums and things like that, people putting Shays Rebellion as one of the top 10 little-known events in American history. And I hope this video will help you understand why this uh, rebellion actually changed the course of our nation. It was so significant that it changed the way everything happened in our country. So although it was a rebellion, and rebellions are typically bad, this one actually had a rather positive outcome in the end. So, well, let's begin without further ado here. So we're going to be covering the who, where, when, why, how, so, what, and all those good things about Shays' Rebellion. Okay, so to begin, who? Shays' Rebellion deals mostly with poor farmers in Massachusetts. And these farmers, they were affected negatively by the Articles of Confederation, the, the government we talked about in our previous video. During the Revolution, many of these farmers took out loans and mortgages to pay for daily living, living expenses while they were away at war. And they also took out these loans and mortgages because when the war was going on, people needed more food, so they saw some, an opportunity to expand the size of their farm and make extra money. Well, obviously, when the war ended, the market for that extra food, it went away, and these farmers now did, had all these extra crops they couldn't sell, and because they had these loans, they could not pay for their mortgages. So with the weak government, like the Articles of Confederation, um, there was not a lot of help out there for people that were struggling like these farmers, and a lot of things went, went really bad. There was, uh, these farmers were obviously returning from war, they were Revolutionary War soldiers, and the government was paying them into money that was worthless, and it was basically a gigantic mess. And to put it, the long and short of it is, is that these poor farmers in western Massachusetts were getting their property taken from them because they couldn't afford to pay their mortgages. Okay, so these farmers began to feel like, hey, I just went out to war and fought for my country, and now I have little say. The government's not doing anything for me. Um, and these bankers and these merchants, the people that are the wealthy people, are making all these rules, and they don't understand my needs. And the political leaders out in Boston and out in other areas of the country um, were passing all these laws to try and... To, they were kind of harsh laws and things that made debt repayment very strict, and these people had no money and they couldn't pay their debts, and it was, it was pretty bad. So what ended up happening, and I see there's a lot of text on this screen, so I'm just gonna say the long and short of it. What ended up happening is that these people didn't wanna to go to prison because they couldn't pay their bills. So they said, you know what? If we can't pay our bills, we're gonna to go to jail. But if there's no courthouses to put us in jail, then it doesn't matter if we don't pay our bills because there's nothing they can do about it. So a lot of the farmers in, in Western Massachusetts started to rally together and they came up with this idea that they were gonna start a rebellion and the target of that rebellion would be the courthouses. So whenever the courthouse would open for business and put all these farmers on trial, the, the farmers would get pitchforks and guns and torches and things and they would shut that they would basically shut the court down and no business would happen in that court and therefore the people that were on trial couldn't go to debtor's prison for their, um, for their debts. So when was this rebellion happening exactly? It started late in 1786 and it lasted for a number of months and the, and the rebellion sort of grew and grew and grew um, and eventually the Massachusetts government had to get an army together to put the rebellion down, and it ended by 1787. Um, in January 1787, Shays and a group of rebels attempted to seize this federal arsenal in Springfield, Massachusetts. The, the rebellion actually escalated to the point where the, the rebels were going to get all these weapons that belonged to the federal government. So it actually escalated above just closing down courthouses but that attempt on the federal arsenal in Springfield, Massachusetts was, was not successful. You see here a hemlock branch. This is a symbol of the revolution. Um, soldiers would put these hemlock branches in their hats. 
and many of Daniel Shea's men who, um, who participated in this rebellion did the same thing because they were Revolutionary War soldiers. So where did this take place? Like I said, it, it mostly happened in western Massachusetts. Daniel Shays took charge of the group. Um, he himself was a former um, soldier in the Revolutionary War. And it happened in like Springfield, Massachusetts, which is not far from us now, and um, in western Massachusetts, um, pretty much just north of where we live. And you see here, um, this is a, a marker out in western Massachusetts that marks the last battle of Shays' Rebellion. You see it happened on February 27, 1787. And so the rebellion did not last long. Um, it was not a successful rebellion. It was eventually ended by the government of Massachusetts. But basically what this rebellion did is it showed everybody in the country that the Articles of Confederation were not working. People were unsatisfied. These farmers in western Pennsylvania felt like their needs were not being met. And people knew that, that the Articles of Confederation had their issues, but now all of a sudden we had this widespread rebellion occurring. And that was shocking for people in, the 17, in 1787. And this was the event that led to our founding fathers saying, you know what, the Articles of Confederation not exactly working well, we need to do something to fix it. And as you'll see later in this unit, the way they fixed it was to create a new government called the Constitution. So we're going to go more into depth about Shays Rebellion in class on Wednesday. And I hope that this video gives you some of the basics so that you know a little bit about why Shays Rebellion occurred and a little bit of what happened in it, but you'll certainly learn quite a bit more when we investigate it further in class. So we'll see you then, and uh, have a good rest of your day.